Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, the Bearded Shaman of Gaming, and it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today I'm stoked to bring you the review for Rise and Shine. Now this is a 2D shooter that aims to raise the puzzle elements of platforming shooters to a whole new level. Let's go ahead and call it Think and Plink for short. I mean, who can dislike a game that starts out with you in a mall that sells keys for chess, Metroid armor, and hints at Half-Life 3, all the while handing you a sentient revolver that looks like Soul Edge's little cousin. Available January 13th, for PC, Rise and Shine comes to you from Super Mega Team and publisher Adult Swim Games. Let's see how they did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Rise and Shine. The possible cause for Zelda's newest delay, more Half-Life jokes than even Valve can handle, and having your life saved by a pimp version of Saint Nick. Graphics are up first. Now one thing I have to say is Rise and Shine looks outstanding, replacing the repetitive and rote torturous patterns that are many times noticed in 2D shooters. Rise and Shine is all one seamless art piece for each level, which means it's like experiencing living in a painting at that time. If that painting of course was a mix of almost fourth wall breaking video game jokes written on 1990s peaches and deviant art websites. And add in the assorted hellfire from enemies as they try to tear Rise into separate pixels, and you have one absolute looker of a game. I mean it, everything in the background is an assorted wizard of wacky parallax scrolling layers that if it instantly doesn't impress you, it sure does indicate you probably have glaucoma. And of course, that excellence in execution is continued within the character designs. They are fantastic, with the childlike Rise and his youthful bounding animations done incredibly well. And of course, Shine, the talking gun that Rise wields, animated a little bit on his own with just enough to give him some personality. Now, enemy designs are also excellent, but they do stray off the beaten path enough that the overall theme and aesthetic, even with its many nods to various other video games like Castlevania and Duck Hunt, can actually get lost. There are some times where your brain is saying, uh, what the fuck is even actually going on? More so because sometimes things within the level just don't make a lot of structural sense. But you know what? That's fine. That's the type of game this is. Overall, it still looks amazing. It runs incredibly well, whether you're freezing, frying, shooting, strafing, sprinting, or springing over your enemies. It just looks good. Even if at times you are wondering if the giant half-tree, half-robotic crane is lumbering towards you to kill you or thank you for celebrating Arbor Day. And I think while creative, the design is also a caveat because at times the team could have done more work separating fore and background. And the color schemes used in the outlandish designs I already spoke about combine to at times make discerning various level bits difficult, especially when you're entering an area and you're under comp complex fire anyway. Overall though, hats off to these guys. The game at times straight up sings. And of course that brings us to sound, music, and voice. And sound is up first in this trilogy of Audio Awesome, and it's actually very good. I mean, this is a game that has rip-off Zelda straight up from a theater reactment in the park die in front of you after having his guts blown out by a giant laser gun, only to see you pick up that same weapon and traipse through an assorted series of scenarios as you learn how to use Rise in smarter and smarter ways, whether it's the crackle of electricity or the strange thump of the world's most ill-designed pacemakers. The sound is excellent, and as I've said before, sound and its separation is vital to understand what's going on in busy sections in game levels, and for the most part here, the sound does help, though at times, especially against specific enemies in this game, there were noticeable tightnesses and a crunch in the sounds as many different weapons and their effects really inhabited the same frequency, and that occasionally made it difficult to really discern where a shot was coming from. Overall though, I'd say it worked, and I was pretty happy with the sound. And that brings us to music. And this was actually pretty good and also bad at the same time. There's an emotional disparity between the excellent tracks that really fit the situation and others that seem more chosen for their brevity. And that was instantly noticeable as you're fighting the world's worst and scariest case of heartworms. There's this keening female vocal that works incredibly well to solidify you in this absolutely terrifying, crazy ass game world. And the fact that it's also mixed in with an almost Batman like thematic beat was excellent. Sadly, that's not carried over all the time, and there are countless instances where the beat-tastic 
fantastic orchestra of adrenaline pumping sounds that you and I expect during busy moments in these kinds of games is replaced by almost nothing, really draining completely the energy of earlier moments where music and soundscape combine with graphics to make you feel right in the heat of things. I guess I'd say, okay music, but I wish there was more and I wish it fit a little better. Voice. Other than a series of grunts and affirmative or negative surprise sounds, there isn't much here to really speak about. Gameplay. So first, a little bit about story. You play as Rise, an inhabitant of Game Earth who sees their planet attacked by the evil group, the Next Gens. And that's not the end of the puns. In fact, the in-jokes and walking puns are played throughout the game for better or worse. And what starts is a slow-moving puzzle game where you need to understand which of Shine's special gun ammo needs to be used at any one time to move you forward. Well, it actually never really does anything but that. Each location and a level of which there are more than 10 are usually broken down as normal mundane shoot 'em ups facing off against random enemies in the level or a more cerebral puzzle piece that might have you energizing an engine so it shoots a beam of light into a pillar to clear your way while also dodging incoming fire. While Rise himself can hide behind cover, jump, dash, and double jump, the gun Shine has various weapon ammos and types like explosive, electrical drone bullets, and more, each unlocked as you go further into the title and aside other unlocks like more bullets in the chamber before needing to reload. And basically rinse and repeat as the somewhat basic but still enjoyable story is bookended by comic book fashion cutscenes. You take rise through a series of the levels with more of a stress on pattern gun usage than aiming or timing. And I think that's where, at least to me, the game lost its edge. Listen, to me, think and plink gameplay is actually awesome and here at times, very enjoyable. And sometimes it's like everyone's triple dog daring each other to see who can kill you the best with the largest amount of bloodshed but its difficulty didn't result in true skill in many situations, but fell far more onto the side of memorization of the rope patterns and recognition there, and many times just dying randomly as things occurred randomly, so you could figure out what to do. Wait for a giant laser to power down, power it up, jump on an enemy head, make the laser miss, rinse and repeat once again. Now, of course, skill did matter, and once I got better, many times those initial deaths went away, but even then, the game's actual difficulty really didn't rise from that point on. Now, on the other hand, I applaud and love the puzzle elements. I just wish there was more oomph to them because once a pattern or idea is understood, getting through that area is almost insanely easy, though there is a hardcore mode that you can choose if you want to turn up that difficulty a little bit. I also love the fact that they have different versions of control, one of course with the gamepad and one with the mouse and keyboard. And while I played a good deal of it with the gamepad due to the way the game requires some moves to be pulled off, once I switched to mouse and keyboard, the difficulty dropped by a factor of 10. Going from gamepad to keyboard is like fucking like realizing you have two legs and your parents have just been taping one behind your ass all your life and some kind of cruel joke. It was night and day. One of the reasons is that the horizontal and vertical shooting elements can have some insanely fast timing requirements if you're using a gamepad, and even quick holstering and re-aiming with the gamepad still leaves you with a decidedly less than adequate control style. Now, like many games, there's going to be a little bit of a give and take, but I think when it comes down to it, there's a lot to like here, but it really depends more on if you buy these kind of games for the true gameplay you expect and the likes of which you might have experienced in the past, or possibly getting it for the surprise of something pretty unique, if honestly fairly short-lived. Fun factor. This is just all over the place due to the way the game plays. Some locations were really incredibly fun trying to figure out an enemy pattern while constantly under attack by three other enemy patterns, all the while knowing that you have maybe two to three hits on you and then you're dead. Very cool. On the opposite end of the spectrum, of which there was more than I expected, there are times that you just breeze through a location or figure out a pattern and realize very quickly that it's windows of opportunity are less windows and more giant gaming subway tunnels. Though speed gamers might have a field day with this, as I could see it being really up their alley when it came to timing how quick they could get through the title. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, with rent being deep, deep sale on PC only titles. This is honestly a wait for a sale. It might be your bag, but unfortunately it wasn't mine. It's got the chops and some pretty unique gameplay, but depending on the style that you expect, it didn't offer enough newness for me to jump to it, and it also didn't offer enough tried and true gameplay for me to just absolutely love it. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those titles that people are going to be arguing about for a while, because it does do a lot of new stuff that I really liked, but its difficulty wasn't there, and overall, at times, it just felt a little bit choppy. And there you have it, another review done. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. That's how I continue to give you reviews that, well, aren't filled with sponsored bullcrap. And if you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Also, in the description, I now have the merchandise links for the Carrick motto for gaming, which is violence solves everything. And of course, ACG's house motto as well. You can get those at Redbubble. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.